I've never thrown a block of cheese before, but I imagine it wouldn't fly very well. Helloing, people of the world of internet people. Welcome to another vehicle review. And today I have a 2023 Toyota Sequoia Capstone Edition. Capstone means it's basically a Lexus with a Toyota emblem on it. And Sequoia because people like trees. So today, I'm gonna get this thing up in the air. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see how this thing's constructed, and then take it out and give it a rip. You can tell it's a hybrid because of the way it is. Jeez, this thing is absolutely enormous. Sakwaya. Hard word to spell. Some of you may be thinking, there's something missing here. And that's because a case of Tibetan spider squirrels stole it and sold it on eBay. And Toyota is aware of the incident and Ace Ventura Pet Detective is on the case again, trying to track them down. The Sequoia has a solid rear axle with a multi-link suspension setup and a 3.31 final drive ratio with an auto LSD. This one has a Hitachi twin tube dampers. And of course I must measure the rear anti-sway bar, which comes in at 27 millimeter. This is the heaviest configuration you can get the new Sequoia in with the iForce Max hybrid system, four wheel drive, and the capstone package weighing in at 6,185 pounds. That's weird. It's got like a little vibration damper on the rear diff. That is insane. That is the thickest drive shaft I've ever seen. And speaking of huge, that's a big muffler. Weird little D whoop going on right here. That's strange. Hey, 824. That's maybe when this was born. boxed frame. There's the motor for the electronic running boards and a little actuator arm. The 4x4s come with a two-speed transfer case. No skid plate to protect it though on the capstone model. That's crazy. Look at the flexible slinky part here by the huge U-joint. Geez, I mean this thing does make almost 600 pound-feet of torque. Toyota did something smart here with the hybrid system. There's no battery pack under here. I can't find it. I can see the cooling lines for it, but it's up above in a protected cavity where it's not exposed to the elements. Smart. This guy right here is the direct shift 10 speed automatic transmission also shared with the Tundra, which is produced by Iazin. It is the AWR 10L65, which has a maximum torque input of 650 Newton meters. That's a like a huge trash bag full of fig Newtons. And that's paired with the same front axle and diff assembly you get in the Tundra as well, which doesn't have any skid plates on it, but it does have a pretty sweet looking dog bone mount. That's pretty beefy. And lots of lilac bolts. That makes me happy. Up front, you have an independent double wishbone suspension. These wishbones are so thick and fully boxed and rugged. The knuckle is made out of aluminum, which I think that's forged. It looks forged. Big, big ball joints. Front anti-sway bar measures in at girthy. That's big. 41? What? 41 millimeter front anti-sway bar. That is the biggest I've ever measured. That's not, oh, that's what she said, shut up. Let's be honest, if you're gonna do real off-roading, you're gonna buy the TRD Pro or TRD Off-Road, not a capstone. So it has a, a hairy carpeted skid plate. <laughs> that's like a bumper chastity belt to remind you it's not a TRD Pro. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? Oh geez. Ooh. Wow, that's really good. That was really good. Especially considering it's a little damp. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a modest set of 353 millimeter or 13.9 inch front rotors with a four piston dual opposed caliper. The wheels, they're a 22 inch half plastic, half alloy. That's plastic, that's alloy. Personally, I feel Toyota missed an opportunity for a set of forged BBSs or rays on this thing that could have knocked it out of the park, but that's just me. And then they're wrapped in a set of 26550 Bridgestone Dueler tires. They're not really off-road tires, but they'll get the job done. The mud likes to stick to the carpeted fender liner. 
Out back, you have a little bit smaller 345 millimeter or 13.6 inch rotor with a single pot caliper. And the wheel and tire is the same size as you get up front. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. Bolstering assessment conduction. Ah, uh, it's a sticky seat. It kind of, it grips you. So it gets a moderate rating. It's heated and ventilated and gorgeous though. It looks like they're designed by a panda. The steering wheel is also heated, but the button is not on the steering wheel. It's down here on the left. And I didn't even know it had a heated steering wheel until this morning. It's a big ass back seat. What is up with this bump right here? These are ventilated and heated as well. That's spicy. Shady boys. Come unhinge, my child. I want to sit back here. Is this fold? Does that fold? Whoa. Oh, I think you can take these out. Weird. Okay. This is pretty neat. Look, I can put the seats up with a button. That's handy. Oh, no way. The third row has a little USB and some cup holders. This is legit the first third row I've ever sat in and been comfortable. I'm 5'11 without heels. I'm like 6'3 right now with these shoes on and I'm comfy. You can see just how much they're reclined and like leg room wise, like look at that. No way, are you serious? The third row gets one of these little shades. Middle seat is amazing back here. I'm reclined and I got leg room for days. Oh, I love this. As far as drive modes go, you got this little dial in the center. And you can go from eco to normal to sport, as well as tow haul. I'm gonna disable traction control with a little up fitter switch. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Ready? Go. Ooh, it's spicy. This thing's pretty damn quick, actually. That's good, that's already good. <laughs> Smooth. This thing gets up and goes for being a giant blob with wheels. This blueprint color is so pretty. Okay, hello. Look how much space there is between the front bumper and grill and the actual radiator core support. That's, that's insane. That's all it opens. Underneath the hood of the 2023 Toyota Sequoia is the V35 Alpha F. TS, which is an all aluminum dual overhead cam twin turbocharged V6 that produces a ton of power because it's also a hybrid. Now the hybrid drivetrain consisting of a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor is parallel mounted between the engine and the transmission. It on its own produces 48 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. That combined with the twin turbo V6 gives a total system output of 437 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 583 pound feet of torque at 2400 RPM. Digging in a little bit deeper on this engine now is a 3.4 liter, 3,445 cc's to be exact, with a 85 and a half by 100 millimeter bore and stroke, a 10.4 to one compression ratio. It is dual overhead cams per bank, and it has Toyota's VVTi, variable valve timing intelligent on both intake and exhaust, as well as D4ST, which is their version of direct and port fuel injection so it keeps the back of the valves clean. Take this off so you can get a better look. Underneath here, ah, there's the air to water charge cooler. It's got a plastic housing around it, I guess to keep heat soaked down. See the orange cables right there for the hybrid system. These things also have a timing chain instead of a timing belt. And as far as the turbos go, there's one per bank of cylinders. You, yeah, you can see them right down there. Looks like the manifolds are cast into the head. Uh, here's a look over on the driver's side. Yeah, this would be not super fun to have to work on. It looks pretty tight inside there. There you go. Ah, there's a little diagram that shows you where the nickel metal hydride battery is located in the rear of the vehicle. And this one's a peanut butter battery. We just got a ton of rain, so it's super soupy out here right now. That's an actual term. And uh, I figure this is a great way to test the four-wheel drive system on this since it doesn't have much ground clearance, only 8.6 inches with the capstone. I'm gonna keep this thing in too high and uh, only switch into four-wheel drive if I actually need it. So I am going sideways. Oh, it's, 
It's super slick out here right now. Oh geez, I don't want to go that way. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, these tires are uh, definitely not well suited to mud. Two wheel drive is making it fun though. Ooh, if I make it through this part. Oh geez, I don't think I'm gonna make it all the way in two wheel drive. Not without sending it. Oh, I guess I will. Oh geez, it's way worse over here. Oh man, I don't think this thing's gonna do it. These tires are poop. I will go into four high. I'm sorry, I'm not setting up any cameras out there because that is a mess. Yep. All right. Try to stay off to the side over here. Some lacking skid plates. Man. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now it's time to try out the gravel pit. Got it in four high. And uh, I still got mud all over my tires. You can feel the weight of this truck sinking in this stuff. Oh, come on. Not bad. Uh, didn't really struggle much on that. A little bit of a pucker factor, but wasn't much of a challenge for this thing. Since Toyota stopped selling the Land Cruiser here in the States, the Sequoia pretty much had to fill the gap. And this Capstone Edition, as far as luxury goes, absolutely fits the bill of what people that were looking for a Land Cruiser wanted in an SUV. It's still super capable off-road, as this thing's proving, considering this isn't even the off-road model. This is probably one of the nicest dashboards I've seen in a truck in a long time. The same with the Tundra Capstone, but this is legit white leather. And then this little wood panel illuminates and glows Capstone at nighttime. The infotainment screen is massive. It's 14 inches and it's actually a little confusing to get used to the menu system in here at first. The vents on the side of the infotainment system are a little 90s boombox cheap looking, but I like that this is rubber right here for the vent. Well, that's a bit of an inconsistency, SUV, car. You can luckily turn off the running boards right here. Squeezable. Well, this is weird. That slides and then you can just drop stuff into the abyss. Yeah. Love that, the glass opens. Well, that's weird. Really not much storage space with these seats up though. Is that an outlet? Man, this would make a great overlanding rig. Rapidly kick your back bumper with a box in your hands and a key in your pocket if you want to read a QR code. As far as fuel economy goes, considering how much power this thing has and how quick it is, I've been averaging just over 19 miles per gallon combined driving with it. That's impressive, especially when you factor in the weight of it and the fact that this aerodynamic is a block of cheese. I've never thrown a block of cheese before, but I imagine it wouldn't fly very well. Depends how hard you chuck it. With this thing, same thing. I'm gonna do a hill climb test, despite this thing not being very well equipped for it. That goofy chin spoiler in the front limits this thing's approach angle to 15 degrees and 20 degrees departure. Uh, four high. This is really steep, actually. I didn't look it. This is, this is super steep. Oh, my trail cam's working. That's nice. Just came on automatically, man. Cameras are a must have for off-roading. They make it so you can do this all on your own without a spotter. That was not even a challenge for this truck. Now, as far as going downhill goes, I'm gonna use this thing called my foot is a hill assist. It works amazing. What happens if I just jab on the brakes? I, I didn't give these tires much credit. They deserve a little bit more than I, I gave them. Now there is some reports going around of this new 3.4 twin turbo V6 having issues with the turbo. More specifically, it's the wastegate actuator. And the turbo isn't actually produced by Toyota. It's a third party company that makes turbos for vehicle manufacturers as is like transmissions or axles, stuff like that. So it is an issue, but Toyota found a new source as of November for the wastegate actuator to alleviate that problem. And honestly, it's a simple fix. It's a simple problem. So I don't think that would let that deter me from purchasing one of these because overall I am thoroughly impressed the 3.4 twin turbo V6. And I think a twin turbo six cylinder makes a lot of sense in a full size Toyota vehicle. It's time to give this Sequoia some scores. First up is the bean score. It's assessment of the feeling you get behind your belly button when you give it the beans. And that Sequoia right there, Capstone Edition 4x4 with the hybrid drivetrain is getting a rating of 
Next is the cookie score. It's an assessment of value. And this capstone edition 4x4 is getting a rating of... It's an expensive SUV that's meant to be an expensive SUV. Next is the mechanic score. It's an assessment of how much pain something is to work on and maintain. And this guy right here is getting a rating of... This coil right here is getting a rating of... I hope my armpits aren't sweaty. That'd be embarrassing. And lastly is the Penguin score. The Sequoia Capstone is getting a rating of... I like its shape. It's a handsome looking muscular rig. I would prefer the TRD Pro though. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.